This is my 16-bit computer from scratch. Today's video is not going to be about the build, but rather the tools that I use for the build. So far, I've only been able to use some very basic tools like a digital logic probe, a digital multimeter, and a tablet oscilloscope that really doesn't work very well. What I really need to add to my toolbox here is a logic analyzer. And that's where this project came in. This is a Raspberry Pi 4B. The intent was to hook this up to a LCD screen with a couple of push buttons so that I could control it basically, but pass the data off to SIGROC for presentation. So what I was going to do was I was going to write and then therefore maintain this project myself, but that would take me away from the 16-bit computer from scratch, and that one is a priority for me. So I did not want to go down that path. Okay, so maybe I buy a solution. I don't believe that I'm going to need more than 100 million samples per second in a logic analyzer, at least not for the 16-bit computer from scratch. But only sampling eight signals is going to be a problem. For a 16-bit computer, you need at least 16 signals, likely many more. The 16-channel version is exceptionally cost prohibitive. Now, I realize there's likely to be other solutions out there that are less expensive, but expenses are expenses these days. But then I stumbled upon this GitHub project. This is a logic analyzer that's built on top of a Raspberry Pi Pico, and it supports 24 channels at 100 million samples per second. It also contains its own logic analyzer software that's built in. And I'm going to say it's pretty mature. There's already version 6 that was released just ahead of me recording this video, and it seems to bring quite a bit of polish to the project itself. Moreover, as I understand it, you can chain up to five of these Raspberry Pi Picos together to be able to sample 120 channels. That sounds like what I'm looking for. So here's a Raspberry Pi Pico W. There are Raspberry Pi Pico 2s that are out, obviously latest and greatest, but I went with less expensive. I bought three of these for about 30 bucks, and... For three of them to get 72 channels to analyze, I think I'm probably going to be in pretty good shape here. So this video is going to be about me trying to integrate this and get it working with my build. If you know anything about the Raspberry Pis, you'll know that all of the inputs here are 3.3 volts, but my 16-bit computer is running on 5 volts. So I need to level shift and adjust that signal so that I can then turn around and do the analysis on it and I'm trying to do it on the cheap. If you want to see a video or learn how to set up the logic analyzer, there are plenty of resources out on the web. I suggest uh, looking through YouTube. There are several videos out there related to setting it up. I'm not gonna go into the specifics of how to get it up and running. I'm gonna leave that to the experts. This is specific to my build. Let's start with the breadboard. We're obviously going to build this on breadboard for now. I will convert this to a PCB at some point in the future. I may or may not record that. This is damaged prior to this, so don't hold me to uh, that problem in this video. I need to start with pin headers for the Pico. And the connection, USB connection off to the PC is on the left over here. And so now it's just a matter of soldering all of these pins down. Okay. Okay, the first thing I want to tackle is tying the Raspberry Pi to ground properly. Okay, now pin 40 is VBUS, which is the USB power coming into the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to use that to drive the breadboard. I need to cross-connect everything now. Okay, let's talk about an arbitrary signal coming from my build. That's what this yellow wire is going to represent. If I was to use three 1K resistors, I'd be able to divide that 5 volts down to 3.3 volts. 
So that then becomes my potential divider if I bridge across the power rail here. Ultimately, this point right here, either, either side of this blue wire, I could take 3.3 volts off to my Raspberry Pi at that point. The challenge with this arrangement is now the load that that puts on the signal. 3000 ohms to ground, that's not necessarily weakly pulling it to ground, but because of the capacitive load on the Raspberry Pi, I want to make sure that I've got a good, strong, driven signal going in there. So this is a 74HC541 line driver. This is not the one that has TTL compatible inputs. What my plan is to do is I will add this into the build to drive that signal with the voltage coming from the Raspberry Pi USB input rather than from the 16-bit computer from scratch build. Now, if I move my signal in question over to be an input into that line driver, take its output and then connect it here. So this is driving a, if you will, fresh 5 volts, which is then divided. Then I can take the 3.3 volts off to the Raspberry Pi and get my signal. I'm only introducing a small delay here. And if every signal goes through a line driver like this, then the delay will be consistent across the board. I should be able to measure everything like that. Now this is obviously messy, so let me work on pulling all of this together. The first eight channels are down here, and I'll likely put the line driver over here for that. The next wrap around the corner, and so I'll put the line driver up here for that. And then the last eight are over here, and so I'll put the line driver up there for that with the voltage or potential divider for each one of those. Lots of resistors, but I have a feeling that this is going to work quite well. Let me position the line drivers first. Then I'll add power and ground. I've already soldered the decoupling caps onto the VCC and ground pins. Next are the enable pins on pins 1 and 19. I want the line driver to always be outputting, so We'll tie those both low. Next, I'm going to pull the line driver inputs either high or low. It doesn't really matter which, as long as there is a defined potential on each one of those pins. I just need to make sure that I pay close attention to what I connect this to because ultimately, if I have some other pull going on somewhere else in the build, it could run into problems and more strongly pull that signal or end up turning into a voltage divider between VCC and ground. For that reason, when I turn this into a PCB, I will end up adding a dedicated level shift IC. Let me fast forward this a bit. Next, I'm going to drop in the resistors for the voltage divider. I'm using three 1000 ohm resistors between the output of the line driver and ground. Now, the line driver will be outputting 5 volts. If I divide 5 volts by 3 equal resistors, each resistor is going to drop 1.67 volts. If I take 1.67 volts away from 5 volts, I'm left with my 3.3 volts I need for the Raspberry Pi. Let me fast forward this a bit. Now to tie all these resistors together, starting with the outputs from the line driver. Next, this will be the node where I pick up the signal at 3.3 volts. Now more of the same, I'll speed it up. Finally, to wire in the inputs of the logic analyzer. Bits 1 through 8 are on the bottom. Bits 9 through 16 wrap around the side. Bits 17 to 24 are on the top up here. Okay, so I've organized a test here. So I am taking from the output of the instruction register uh, bits 16 through 24 on the logic analyzer. 
And then bit one is my copy hold signal, which is for when the control logic is in copy mode. Bit two is my break signal coming from the control logic. That's going to be driven by the instruction over here. Bit three is my single step clock. Bit four is my adjustable clock. Neither of those are relevant because I don't have that control bit hooked up. So unless I push the buttons over here, nothing's really going to happen. Bit five is the input that I am using for the, ins the fetch registers. So I will manually move bit zero from zero to one or low to high, causing a break instruction to emit. Bits six and seven here are not going to be used. And bit eight is actually my high speed clock to show that I can actually get some reasonable performance out of this. So I'm roughly at 3000 samples per second. I'm gonna hang on to 10 samples before my trigger. I'm gonna capture about 31,000 samples after the trigger. That should give me about 10 seconds to do what I need to do here. So when I start capturing, I'll hit reset. Once it's out of reset, I will set the break instruction and manually move the clock over. Still capturing. Still capturing, now it has it. So now I can zoom out so I get a little bit bigger picture here. And here you can see where my fetch bit went high. The instruction bit went high, and at the same time, my break instruction was emitted. And then farther down the list here, you can see where I changed manually from the adjustable clock to the single step clock. The adjustable clock LED goes off, the single step LED comes on. That's going to be good enough for me. My instruction bit is being picked up off the instruction bit. The only challenge I have, honestly, is my clock signal. Overall, I'm gonna call this a win, and you'll start seeing this a little bit more in my build. Ultimately, I'm going to uh, convert this to PCB at some point. We'll see you soon.